my name is Katja Weisel. I'm associate professor at the University Medical Center of Hamburg-Eppendorf in Germany. And I'm presenting here in behalf of my co-investigators an updated analysis of the Castor trial. Uh, the Castor trial investigated the addition of the monoclonal anti-CD38 antibody daratumumab um, to the standard of care regimen with bortezomib and dexamethasone in patients with relapse and refractory multiple myeloma, um, including patients from first relapse on. And the trial included about 500 patients and the primary endpoint, progression-free survival, was uh, shown two years ago here at the ESCO meeting and also published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And this year we looked on the data again with a much longer and mature follow-up of now 14 months. And we looked again first on the primary endpoint, the progression-free survival, and we saw with this long-term follow-up um, that we uh, see with the addition of the monoclonal antibody to the standard of care regimen that we have a 69% um, reduction of risk for um, progression or death in the observed time. And even more striking was that for patients receiving this regimen with daratumumab, bortezomib and dexamethasone at first relapse, they had a 78% reduction for progression or death. We went a bit deeper in the data and looked on the two subgroups of standard cytogenetic risk and high risk defined by cytogenetics. We included about 15% of high risk patients in both arms and we saw uh, that the high-risk patients had the same advantage from the addition of the monoclonal antibody than standard-risk patients. In regards of progression-free survival, but also in regards of over-response rate. The addition of the monoclonal antibody led to a, a doubling of deep responses, especially very good partial responses. And we looked also on the PFS2. The PFS2 means the time from starting the treatment until progression to the next line of treatment. And this is for us a surrogate parameter for overall survival. And again here, uh, for standard and high-risk patients, the PFS2 uh, was, was significantly increased when daratumumab was added to bortezomib and dexamethasone. Nowadays, with the deep remissions, we look also on minimal residual disease. So if we can detect residual levels of the myeloma disease in the bone marrow with um, next generation sequencing methods. And we saw that um, the daratumumab led to a higher rate of minimal disease, uh, residual disease negativity. For high risk patients, only patients achieving the monoclonal antibody could, res uh, could uh, achieve minimal residual disease negativity. And in this long-term follow-up, even those high-risk patients remained in the majority relapse-free, showing that this endpoint is highly important for high-risk cytogenetic patients. So in total, we can say with this longer follow-up of now 40 months, we can confirm very nicely what we saw initially when we looked on the primary endpoint, that daratumumab is a crucial um, drug in uh, treating myeloma disease and that its efficacy and safety um, is very um, efficient and that patients have a much better prognosis when this is added to standard of care.